Joy Church Podcast. We got Felicia hey, Baker hey, hey, in the house. Finally. <laughs> Come <laughs> on. Yes, let's just throw it out there. If you didn't know, we tried to do Felicia's several weeks ago, probably about a month and a half a month, ago, yeah. about a six, six weeks ago, and we didn't know it, but somehow, some way, the video recording just stopped, and so the devil is a lie. Yes. So we're back tonight. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we didn't have, it was too cold outside. That's why we didn't have the honeybee decorations. So it's springtime. We have the honeybee decorations. And lo, and we got the honeybee bobblehead. And lo and behold, you come in and you got honeybee colors Not on. Not even on purpose. Here we go. I so can't good. wait, man. God's got something in store for us tonight. Amen? <laughs> yeah, he does. All right. Hey, man, Fleece, it's good to have you. Hey, Amen. Amen. It's so awesome to have you part of Joy Church. Well, thank you. Amen. I love your worship. I love how you just go all in in our worship time and worship sets. And just, uh, yeah, you, there's no reservation with you. You just jump all the way into Jesus' lap and get lost. Yeah. Sure. And I, I love that. I love Thanks that. Space. I love that. I, I love just, that. You inspire uh, my worship. Thanks. Amen. You inspire me, too, when I'm playing. Oh. And then, and, and then when flags, we'll, we may talk about the flags later on, mm. because when you hear this girl's story, you're going to, when she waves the flags, every devil in, if there's a yeah. devil in a 10 mile radius, it's he true. likes get gone. Amen. All uh, right. I didn't get taught to wave flags a conventional way. It was a very unique way. Come so. on. Amen. That's organic. Yeah. Oh yeah. Organic's yeah. the word. From experience. Uh, yeah. yeah. Your own experience. Uh, yeah. From both yeah. sides of the fence. Man, that's actually a really good point. Yeah. That's, there's a piece to it that I There's a reason why there's meant, authority when you do that because yeah. of the, your, the, your, your experience, your past. Well, let's get into it. Let's do it. Felicia right. Baker. How old are you, Felicia? Oh, really? Oh, okay. We, we no, can I don't skip care. that one. Start I really don't care. <laughs> She's 22. I'm kidding. I don't care. I'm 35. So. 35. Yeah, okay. Me. And so, you know, we're, what we're doing on the Joy Church podcast this time around, we may get into other stories, but right now we're doing salvation stories, pre-Christ, Amen. the shebanga, when you got, yeah, your eyes were lit up, your ears opened up, and you started hearing and seeing God and stuff, and then this side of the fence, amen? Amen. So tell us a little bit, growing up, what, what was it like growing up? All right, growing up. Uh, first off, I have amazing mom and dad. They loved me extremely well individually. They just had no love for each other. Okay. Um, pretty, pretty tension, very much tension in the home. A lot of fighting and a lot of just, you could tell there's, there's not love between the two. They stayed in separate rooms. Now did you pick this up at so, an early age? Um, let's see, that's a good question. If it's stump, if it's have, a trick question, you can move on. I had to. If I, I wouldn't be surprised because I'm a I'm okay. a feeler. I'm a really high sensor. Okay. And I knew that started young. You're so an empath. Huh? I may not know. Yeah. Recollect it, but I'm okay. Certain. So you're in the house. And yeah. Mom and dad love you to the yes. to the moon and back. Absolutely. But got a little tension between a them two. A lot okay. of tension between right. the two. Cool. Yes. Yeah. You know, there's no it, every home is is some form of dysfunction. True. Amen. All the way back to Adam and Eve. Okay. That's and so true. yeah, the first family, the the, yeah. the kids wound up killing one another. One one That's wound true. up, ki- amen. So <laughs> so, all right. I don't know if I want to say amen to that, but they did. <laughs> You're right, yeah. they did. At least you okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's that. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, so grew up going to church, but didn't believe that the church had anything good to offer. Most of the time, I got saved when I was really young, got baptized, but I think when my eyes started opening to okay, my home life is not great. Like my mom cries in the, in the closet all the time. And my dad's yelling all the time. And I'm like, then why, what is, what is this? Okay. What is this for? What's yeah. religion worth? If this is what mm-hmm. Absolutely. you end up looking like. So, um, I had a real hard time with, and I still wrestle with it to be honest. Thank goodness for a church like joy church, but churches that don't do anything when they see, difficulties in the home when they just don't do anything mm-hmm. so yeah I've, I've that's, that's why transparency is so important in creating a culture yeah. of transparency so we it's a safe place we all you yeah. know we all got stuff let's, nobody, let's deal with it nobody right. was ever there for my parents and i think that could have changed yeah. a lot of things or there for my okay. mom and so that kind of turned off. you off to christianity yeah big you time say huh? that yeah okay. there was no point like i'm not going to do anything if it doesn't have purpose 
okay. that's kind of mm-hmm. a core root for me. Yeah. So if there's no purpose, then, well, there's no purpose because all they're doing is crying and fighting and angry and crying and fighting. <laughs> I don't want to be a part of that. So uh, I got to... Uh, and you're probably hearing a message about joy and peace. And, oh, yeah. And, and love. Yeah. And, yeah. So With, just Not to mention the home life, but the clicks in the church that were ridiculous, like just constant clicks, so nobody okay. letting anybody in. Right. Everything was always. So you recognized all that. You're oh, rec- yeah. I'm an empath. Okay. I can see that all stuff. All right. I'm with you on that. Okay. I'm, I'm more reserved yeah. because I'm an empath. I sense things, and I'm like. Yeah. <laughs> real is real. Um, anyways, so I got to middle school was where things started going bad. Okay. I was a very unique child. I was the flower girl. I'm off buzzing with the bees in the fields, have no idea that other people exist on the planet, that anything else exists except for nature. Just love being in nature. And I went from that and then found out in middle school, oh, that's not okay. You're going to get bullied real bad. Like, that oh, just doesn't work. You can't be innocent. Okay. You can't be free spirited. You can't be a modern day hippie girl, huh? No, you can't. Okay. You have to be a, a, what I call Dallasite, and you know, you have to have things together. And that just didn't okay. work for me. So, so. bullying going on. Oh, yeah. You just, you're, you're the different. nature child. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I was innocent. And let's get real. It, the nature child was a thing, but the innocence that I had that I carried was an innocence from the Lord. And it was a gift from the Lord. And yep. all childs, all children hold it. I think I was gifted with an extra measure of innocence. And I know that the enemy went after that. And he attacked mm-hmm. that real hard. Yeah. And so it was attacked real okay. hard as a kid. Um, then got into high school and it got worse. And ended up having... The bullying got worse? Yeah, it got worse. Okay. I pretty much lived my high school days without any friends. Like okay. I just didn't have So any. an outcast. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. But an outcast without anybody telling her that that was okay an outcast without trying to be an outcast yeah yeah Yeah. and it wasn't pleasant it wasn't like that outcast nowadays you you didn't sign you didn't sign up for that (laughs) did you (laughs) that didn't look cool doing it that was a mess um uh so how'd that affect you so it affected me by me saying i made the decision my well first off let me put in there and this is really important the enemy knows what's going on in your life Mm -hmm. and he knows and he attacks things he's very He's very direct. He does not, mm-hmm. oh, I'm just going to attack over here. It's it's very direct with what you're dealing with specifically. And that's an, important for us to understand when we're walking out life and all the difficulties. Yeah, and he, he knows our family tree better mm-hmm. than we do. Yeah, he does. Yeah. So he sent, because he's direct, he sent somebody into my life, which it took me a while to figure out that she was on assignment from the enemy to introduce me. And it still hurts, man. Okay. To introduce me. To all the things that were not innocent, everything that was uninnocent and that oh, is wow. dark, she was sent wow. on assignment from the enemy, just like the Lord sends people and He sends angels. The enemy sent her on assignment and said, "She's ready." So it she wasn't like a, a a mild decoy here and a mild decoy. No. It was go for the. Oh yeah, this girl was just just name it, and she was already in it. Okay. Like we okay. don't have to name all the things. She was already she... in all the things introduced me didn't bully you no she didn't she befriended oh. me and i finally had a friend okay that loved mm. me and accepted me as i was wow. um yeah so that was really bad so news. now <laughs> trust is starting to be in uh, yeah earned and gained not earned but gained with someone yeah. that's chosen not to bully you right and she, embrace you right just like you are mm-hmm. oh wow okay uh, you name it she taught me all the things and i was we can be primed and ready for the Lord and to hear the gospel and we can pray for that and intercede for it. And it's a real thing. And I also know that the enemy primes people and gets them ready for an assignment. And I was primed and ready for that assignment. Mm -hmm. Now the Lord could have thwarted it in an instant, not saying that he couldn't have, I'm just saying that was a real thing. It's a real tactic. Um, saying that because I want people to be aware that the enemy is doing stupid, ridiculous things that we can actually pinpoint and that are really obvious. Um, was, it, was that a fair statement? Yeah, fair I mean, statement. let okay. me ask you this. In the midst of this, yeah. did you did you sense that, man, something's not right here? No. This is great having a friend, but... I sensed the opposite. I went, finally, somebody's going to introduce me of how to be included in other people's oh. groups. All I wanted was more friends. The big inclusion. And if she could teach me... me then I could actually be with regular people. I could actually be on the inside, not on the outside. Okay. Mm -hmm. So she got me on the inside of darkness. 
Um, I what went ways? My, Can you go into any specifics? I, the easy things to point out is she introduced me to smoking, all of them, smoking pot, uh, smoking um, regular cigarettes and, and all that crap. And she introduced me to cuss words and she introduced me to sex and she introduced me to um, a little bit of drugs, but not really heavy on that. Okay. I think she was... Any witchcraft? Yeah, I know there was a lot of manipulation, and oh, I know that's okay. witchcraft. Okay. She is the one that introduced me, I think, to the Ouija board later okay. on. So, All right. Yeah, that took a f- few years, but we did get there. Okay, um, where did this relationship go? Yeah, so... I mean, I, I know you're it, diving in, all in. Yeah. How, how big, how strong of a bond, how long did y'all... She was my only friend for... How long? Three, four years. Okay. Um, I had another friend, but... She was adopted by this girl the same way I was. Both oh, of us were. Okay. So, so let me ask you, little. How, did this, how did this affect your family? I mean, what's mom doing? What's your mom that loves you to the moon and back? Dad loves you to the moon and back? What's going on there with this, oh. this total, like, I'm taking the exit ramp, like the big high five exit ramp? My, my mom was very Start distraught freaking out. Okay. by the things that were happening in her own life that unfortunately the enemy had her blinded to what was happening to me. Um, she was very, very, very happy that I had a friend. Yeah. And that's what she saw. And you know, moms are usually, they're the last ones to admit yeah. or think that something's yeah. going on with my baby. Yeah. yeah. And my dad, I could have cared less what he said. Okay. Didn't, it didn't matter to me what he said. I absolutely hated the man, which now... Man, I love my dad so much. That's we so have, awesome. Listen, I have Come daddy on. daughter dates, and I will to the day that I die because I love my dad so much. He's been there for me, but at the time, but this was, was a, a season. Hatred. Yes. Yeah, this is where you're at. This and this is more about you than it is him, huh? Yeah, yeah. It, it was. Yeah. yeah. So mom didn't recognize it, and then junior year of high school is where the the major flip happened. Or maybe nope, that's not true. It was freshman year. Okay. <laughs> oh. Freshman year. Freshman. I go into summer, and this is an important part of my um, testimony. I go into summer, and I decided I'm not going to be me anymore. I'm done. And I sold my soul. And I said, whatever looks like me. So mm. all of my colorful clothes, because you'll never really catch me wearing black. Nature it's, girl. It's closest black I'll ever wear in my life. Um, <laughs> I don't own any black. Uh, I wore nothing but color. I was into nature. I was super highly creative and all the things that made me me. I said, check out, done. I don't like you. I'm done with you. I've decided that you're invalid. And I took on a new identity that the enemy himself gave me because I I agreed with it. And you can't take on an identity that you don't agree with, by the way. And what was that? Uh, darkness, um, hatred, anger, all black clothes, all black okay. clothes, golf. Uh, golf. So we're talking yeah. golf. Oh, okay. full golf. Uh, okay. The black eyeliner, the black garb all over my face okay. on my black neck. Boots. On black boots, black yeah. trip pants. Yeah. You name it, chains, which is, it's just not my personality. It's really, I see golf people and they make, they make 60 bell bottoms. People look like, you know, yeah. nothing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So all right. gave up everything, even my music too, like all my music, all my art forms, like just gone. So what was your music up. and art forms before you went black? I listened to some Christian music. I listened to some country. I listened to maybe some classic rock because my parents introduced me to it and okay. a lot of little cutesy pop stuff. Okay. Then I went into heavy metal straight up. Boom. I'm like, if we're going to do this, we're going to do this. So straight to heavy metal and anything that could give me that feel of power. our opener on our podcast didn't give you a flashback did it ding, 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 ding. No. no that's that's mild that's, compared that's to what rock, you were listening to but it ain't to. heavy <laughs> i know no. i was a megadeth fan Ooh. yeah this little girl here who was much wow. tinier then was going to metal concerts and getting into mosh pits which if you have any idea mosh pits are like now hold on this is so. crazy nature girl yeah goes golf yeah and now you're in mosh pits yeah. and metal music yeah. wow what is that's an extreme man that's, that's like little a flip. huge extreme which mm-hmm. is done easily when you partner with spirits goes yeah. the other way too okay <laughs> you can flip to absolutely you can flip right, oh, yeah, on. right jesus on back. is about flipping Instantly. his back too amen right on. On. yeah he can back to our destiny and he loves to amen. Uh, i won't go into it my name is by the way this is felicia Renee, this is what Felicia means, and this is what Renee means, Joy Reborn. So the Lord had it planned oh, wow. all the time. That's why it's on there. That's my Come on. He had it planned the whole oh. time. He knew what he was doing. And he knew I wasn't going to be lost forever. 
Um, and you're going to Joy Church. And I'll go Come to Joy Church. That's so awesome. <laughs> it might be Jesus. Come on. <laughs> you think? <laughs> it might be. <laughs> yeah, when, okay, so anyways. you're gothing, man. You yeah. still got this friend? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. What's what's going on? Did you, did you go a little bit deeper into I darkness? What's, I did. Tell us a little bit I about that. Don't, and that's where a lot of things start going, disappearing from my memory. Okay, a uh, lots of you. You've memory mentioned gaps. that to me before yeah. about you, you just got into so yeah. much darkness that yeah. you just kind of mind blocks and. Which I got a revelation on that before, from talking to someone, in the past few weeks that I went, duh, why has that never occurred to me? So I won't go too far deep in my, in into my uh, testimony. Let me let me take it one step at a time. Also trying to be quick because I can talk. Yeah, we're good. Jesus I'll keep me. you going. Thanks. Um, okay, so I get pretty dark in high school, and it really was me playing around with stuff. Nothing was settled in mm-hmm. as much as it could have been outside of high school because you're still under your parents' roof, and my parents were, I think, contending for me as much as they could, but they didn't really understand what to contend okay. for. Uh, then I don't remember when my timeline is all, I developed multiple personalities. I think after I started drinking and by the way, I turned into an alcoholic within, I don't know, less than a week. Uh, you so just, you were a just, binger right off the bat. I was. Oh, and um. I didn't do nothing less than 45%. Unless it was 45% See, or above, I wasn't going to do it. I was the same way when I got involved, no man. It's like, pew. if I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. There I didn't no become person. a binger. I started a binger. Right. <laughs> yes. Uh, I don't really remember who introduced me to alcohol, but the first like few sips, I went, all oh, right then. Okay. This is good This stuff. was your mm-hmm. drug of choice. The it granddaddy was. of them all. It was. And okay. here's a, a funny note, which this is also, I just think it's Jesus somehow, and it's really fascinating to me. I drank, when people ask me why I drank, I drank, this still makes me laugh. I drank to feel like me, which is hilarious Mm -hmm. because I'm the one that gave up me. So I drank to rekindle nature, nature girl, right? The free spirited, fun dancer, creative. I drank to find that, but I'm the one that gave that out out of, Uh. out of black and back into color. Right. But I, I couldn't because Alcohol is black. <laughs> it is black. So it just never really worked. And okay. I would get a little taste of it and then okay. forget about it because, you know, drink it all the time. So Spiritual stuff. What, it is. What, what did you get into? Um, the worst that I got into was... That, now, do you think that getting into the spirit... Let me, uh, yeah. Did the split personality come after you delving into spiritual darkness? It, do you know? I don't know. If you, if you don't, that's fine. I don't know. But I tell us about the spiritual so. darkness that you delved into so, and that you tampered with. I eventually got to where this wasn't enough. Just the playing around wasn't enough. Um, I moved into this back room in our house mm-hmm. that for as long as I can remember, as far back as my brain can go, I remember being scared of that room. It was full of a bunch of stuff. You know, people have junk drawers. We had a junk room. So it was just <laughs> full and full of stuff and we cleaned it out for somebody that temporarily moved in with us for like a week I I don't even I don't even remember that apparently it was a random friend this room that I had been afraid of my whole life and I I didn't know why I'd never put any thought to it I decided okay this is it I want that whatever that is I want that this is the room I've always been scared of right I want it I want because yeah there's something about that I'm in for fear I'm in for darkness let's go for it this is where I want to okay. be. Okay. So you get in this room. What starts going on? Um, I started playing around even harder with demons. So that's where I was. I opened eventually a portal in my room for demons. I don't really know the timeline of that, but I know that I did it. And I know that they were moving furniture because I asked them to. I would go to school before I'd go to school and say, hey, move this piece of furniture. And they'd move it. Now, let me ask you this. So, did anybody teach you that? No. Nobody oh, wow. taught me that. Okay. All right. <laughs> Isn't that wild? Just because you got into darkness, yeah. you started learning how to play around with yeah. dark creatures. Yeah, somebody was teaching Spir- me, but it's not spiritual darkness. Of this world. Yeah. Yeah, come on. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think about that back in my own life because right. when I got involved in heavy metal and all that stuff, man, we were doing like sacrificing goats and stuff and seances out in the woods on LSD and <laughs> all kinds of crazy stuff. So, And nobody taught me that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I had a good grandma like your grandma. <laughs> 
So uh, that's where things like get super, super fuzzy because that was my really demonic phase where, and I wanted all of it. I was doing Ouija boards back there and I was talking to the demons, having conversations with them. Now, the, the, is I this was, where the split personalities came in? Do I'm you, guessing so. Okay. I'm really not certain, but that would make sense to me. Okay. How many did you have? Do you, um, know? Do you as know that? As far as I remember, I had three. Okay. Uh, there might've been more. But as okay. far as I remember, I introduce think. us to those three. Yeah, so we had one who was the angry, powerful, like okay. bitter. I'm going to take control of I'm things. I'm in control, and you're not going to control me. Gonna if you do, you... I'm going to. Ah. Mm-hmm, exactly that okay. one. We know the type. And then I had one that was a little girl. And something to know about okay. multiple personalities. It's really important to understand this. Is that, and if you don't think they're real, they're real. But one oh, of the things real. to understand is. Sometimes multiple personalities come from it's a demon straight out. That's what it is. And sometimes pers- the multiple personalities is from trauma that you've experienced, and you take a portion of yourself and you put it in a box, and it's you box uh, it up and pack it away. You box it up and pack it away, and okay. you separate it. And the one that was like like this was the demon straight demon. And I'm going to say something about that in a second. That's really beautiful from the Lord (laughs) that he did. And then there was one that I remember was my little girl. And of course I hated her. I mean, like I loathed her when she would come out. I would think that that would be some relief for you, but no, I was so mad. The angry one was the relief. (laughs) Yes. I felt in control. If I'm absolutely the little girl Mm. that's free spirited, I'm going to get bullied again. People are going to hate me again. I hate me when I'm there. We can't do that. Like you are supposed to stay in a box so i'd like ever bully me again crawl i'm like back in there crawling from the inside trying to get her to shove back in a box okay then i had one that was nothing and i mean nothing numb just numb yes completely like non-existent and i don't understand Mm. it but non-existent and i don't really understand that one i've never gotten a word from the lord about what that one's about if he wants to tell me great if not i'm also fine with that too okay it doesn't really matter to me either way but this one the one that was like so powerful and strong was a straight demon and i've realized i had the revelation that the reason why i have a lot of my memories blocked is because they're not blocked a lot of my memories gone is because from the kindness of the lord those memories stayed with that demon and when she left me they left me because oh, they're not mine oh yeah they never uh, belong to me come on i mean somebody a person walks out of your life we got memories yeah that helps us grow amen yeah but they do you, what you're saying is when this devil got cast out of you yeah. The memory of all of it deuces. Yeah. See you later. See you later. <laughs> yeah. Come on. That's, that's awesome. Cool. That's just, to me, Come that's on. such kindness of the Lord. Because now that's deliverance. Real. It is yeah. deliverance. Yeah. <laughs> take your memory too. <laughs> you, right? <laughs> yeah. Take yourself, take your memory. <laughs> Come on. So, that's awesome. I think that's a, a lot of the reason why I don't remember a lot of things. And okay. I don't necessarily want to remember them because they're not mine and I didn't do it and right that's straight up mercy like you want to define wow. mercy Absolutely. i decided for that demon to come live in my life he didn't put himself there without my decision and yet the lord said you're going to take those memories in his way with you because this one's mine and you can't wow. like you can't implant those in her wow. so that's a beautiful way to look at that because some people were like oh, i want my memories back yeah. and struggle with it and it'd yeah. be an issue and all that stuff it's like no no. You're not getting them back because they left. Yeah. <laughs> they don't belong to me. So. That's yeah. awesome. Okay. Yeah, it's kindness of the Lord. So how old are you at this point? Uh, okay. You got high Let's school see. yet? Yes. I think I was just out of high school. And I had to have. Now man, you said. My timeline is so you said, bad. You said become, before coming into the show this, this, this evening. Yeah. That you learned a new bit oh, of Oh, yeah. Have I not shared that yet? Uh-uh. Okay. Not sure that yet. I don't think okay. so. Uh-uh. All right. Uh, so yeah, this is this is what the enemy likes to do. He likes to tell lies. Um, apparently, my grandmother, who by the way is an amazing woman of God, a prayerful, prayerful, beautiful inside and out woman of God. Georgia. Yes, Georgia Baker. Mm-hmm. Man, she's got a smile too, and I actually love her hugs. And I don't love a lot of. She reminds hugs, me of my grandmother. Her hugs. First time I met her. <sighs> Just, she reminds me of my grandmother. She apparently, and I don't remember this at all, but I've had it confirmed. She paid two people that uh, their job was deliverance or pulling people out of darkness. I'm not really sure exactly what their job was, but I know that they were paid by her to come into my house and 
help me in whatever way that means. Uh, deliverance or, or getting me out of darkness, whatever you want to look at. That's what they were paid for. And they left saying, and they've done this dozens of times apparently, I was not, this was not a new thing for them to do. They've done this many, many times. And they lived there and they left saying, she is beyond help. She cannot be helped. We cannot help her. She's done. Wow. Um, and but Jesus. there was a few other people that told my parents the same thing. And they said that if she doesn't get out of this soon, that her life is going to be in Okay. It's never you, the Lord's you, plan. Can you um, recall about how old you are here? Okay. So probably, probably 19. Okay. Probably 19. Okay. So. Probably 19. All right. We know exactly where you're at. How how did you how did the Lord start bringing yeah. you into light? Yeah. So I mean, how did that process start? Do you have memory of that? I have the memories I need. Let me uh, put there it that you way. go. All I have right. the memories there I need. Go. I was living with a girl at the time, and we were. Um, I was a, a lesbian at the moment. Whatever. Um, Pretty, okay. That's just because I wanted any darkness that was dark. Right, absolutely. So that's all that was about. Um, so I was living with her, and somebody, two people, Jim and So Stu, Sue Stowe. I always do that with their names. Jim and <laughs> Sue Stowe. That's why I was pausing. Like, okay. Getting mixed up. All right. They had been praying for me for a long time, and were good friends of my my parents, and they were trying to counsel me. Through the multiple personalities, they're the first ones that diagnosed me. Obviously, okay. I was like, I don't care. I'm not losing them. If you want to call it that, I like them. Counsel Leave all you want. Leave me alone. Uh, they invited me to a um, ministry called Trace Dias. It's a three-day encounter with Christ. Now, I don't necessarily agree with what was done, but it was the Lord's choosing at this moment. Okay. Trace Dias is not meant for unbelievers. It is meant for believers that have lost their fire and okay. that have lost their passion okay so it's three days encounter with christ let's get real let's get raw get Remember the back Father's up. Heart. right okay that's what it's for but i so got what in, happened to you though i <laughs> went because they dragged me out of the house okay not by choice i was about to run before they got there and didn't run in time because the lord i didn't run in time <laughs> so didn't right get out in time. i didn't get out in time <laughs> they didn't escape. and so they drug me to trace Dias and i was there like I hate everybody. <laughs> I hate you. I hate you. Like, you name it. I All hate everybody. You. And I was telling him, I'm like, I don't care. I don't want anything to do with any of y'all. I hate <laughs> every one of you. Don't talk I to I hate me. your Trace Diaz self. I Get on do. out of my face. <laughs> Get out of my face. <laughs> and I got to the end of the weekend and something had broke. Uh-oh. Because somebody gave a testimony about their dad. Mm. Somebody gave a testimony about their dad. And I don't remember what they said, but I remember my heart going, because <laughs> that's where a lot of the break was with, okay. with my earthly father who uh, now if i haven't said it already i have daddy daughter dates and i'm oh 35. you said it yeah. it's important because i love my dad a lot. absolutely this is just um, part of the story yes so anyways um i got home and i went back to my sin life all of it i went back to all of it by the way i didn't mention that i've had a kid at this point i had oh. a, i had a kid okay 19 I think I was 19. Okay. I was 22 when I got saved. So okay. I, I had a kid at 19, gave him up for adoption. The, uh, my parents were really sneaky. They got me a Christian adoption agency, and I didn't know that. Okay. <laughs> They're so sweet. All I right. actually loved they did that so much. Uh, so he's with the Christian home, and I would have never chosen that. So kind of okay. support. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> uh, it's important for the story. So I, I am, where was I? I just left off. I just... My brain. Trace Diaz. Thank you. Okay. Trace Diaz is over. I get home. And you go back. I did. To your I old ways. Trace Diaz. It, did, it didn't work, but it did work. It did work. Okay. My eyes were open, and I remember getting mad because I'm like, crap, I can't do these things without my conscience now. I all of a sudden have this conscience. Oh. And it was making me so frustrated. I'm like, the, the drinking wasn't right anymore. This relationship felt gross. The stuff felt bad. And I'm like, why does it feel bad? And I'm so mad at it. And I think I went back to Trace Diaz specifically to figure out why was this making me mad? What has happened to me? It wasn't because I'm like, I love Jesus now. I just... So you know. did literally go back I to a back. three day? I don't understand, but I went back. <laughs> Nobody really understands it. I still don't understand. I'm going to go back a second time to find out what happened the first right. time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do have this core center of I have to understand things, which me and the Lord okay. have worked on that okay. a lot. All right. It's not our business to understand everything. Yeah. 
But I, so I went, I, I really can't understand why I went or why they let me go. Cause I still hated everybody. Okay. And I was still very clear with, I don't like you, <laughs> but I was on a so team. So did you tell the second rounders you didn't like them I did. too? <laughs> and they didn't care. They loved me anyways. Come they, didn't, on. they didn't care. They, I, I've never been loved oh, like wow. that. Like I've never been loved like that. That's why you had to go back. It's mm -hmm. <laughs> probably why. The Lord, yeah. uh, Lord had you. Let's be honest. That's probably what was happening. He had a on the bunch inside. of lovers on that second <laughs> one, right, man? So I went back and I was on this team. And by the way, they let me be a part of the worship team, which I still don't agree with, but they did. And it was the Lord's, the Lord worked on it. Um, I was part of the worship team, so to speak. I really didn't do anything. I don't even think I was ever on a mic. I was just standing there because I didn't know any of the okay. songs anyways. At the end of the weekend, and this is what, this was my salvation moment. Most of the time you hear about people like somebody preached the gospel to him. Nobody preached anything to me. Mm -hmm. I got saved and I've told this to Lauren because it was really important for her to hear. And it, it's, it's so special, but at the end of the weekend, and it's only been three days, like this is, this is three days. It's not a long time. All three of these women that I've been working with, their husbands brought them a bouquet of flowers. That doesn't only happen. I don't think I've seen that hardly ever. And I've worked like 20 or 30 trace deuses, and that just doesn't happen. Okay. But all three of these women's husbands brought them bouquets of flowers and they didn't talk ahead of time. They didn't know each other. So how'd that affect you? I saw that and was shattered. Evidently it did I was because done. you still remember it. That was, that was my salvation moment. Wow. And I said, okay, I want you, Jesus. Wow. If that's real, if their husband- It's really, almost like the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit yeah. brought- bouquet of roses yeah to you. It, it was to their wives but it was i think it was more of wow. the broken relationship with my parents hurt me more than i recognized yeah mm -hmm. and i didn't believe that love was real and seeing that these husbands really loved their wives it's only been three days what are you doing yeah, it's that, not a big the, deal it's the exact polar opposite of what you yes. experienced okay yes and that's when i said makes sense i'm done how long was that between the first trace ds and the second one uh six months i think okay I All think right. it was six months, okay. maybe a year, because okay. they happen every six months. So, it was so six you're months at like year. hour 71 on a three-day deal, and yeah. it's like, boom. Yeah, it was the end of the weekend. that, that You know, I didn't have the time. gospel preached to me. Really? I just had my mom show up at a dope motel and say, Rod, I know you're in there. Right. Yeah. And I, 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 God showed me this where you're at, and I flushed all the stuff down the toilet and came out, and I was, I was born again. God it's said, love. let there be light. Every time it's love. <laughs> Come on. Every time. Even yeah. when people are preach the gospel and they get saved, it's because it's the love of the gospel. It's never anything else but love that saves a person's Come heart. Because that's what he is. Yeah. Um, that is love. So I went home and I gave it all up. I walked away from everything. No way. Like, Just that. Boom. Done. Come on. Uh, that's a born again. Done. Uh, to I the gave bone. Up all of my CDs, which were full of demons. Like I could feel demons on them there was stuff everywhere that had slip knot oh. all that stuff oh yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. okay had that got to get out <laughs> all of it all got right. out and then i had some people avenge Jim. sevenfold oh that was i actually have their emblem on my back unfortunately tattooed oh really so, okay <laughs> one day i'll get that changed <laughs> but it's testimony anyways okay um so th they were my i got favorite, you but okay which there's truth in the fact that they were creative too. So there yeah. was still part of me that was alive. I, I thought they were. I thought Dave Mustaine was one of the most creative uh, people in the world. I wanted him to be president. <laughs> I don't know about that, but I did like him. <laughs> anyway, so I gave up everything, like you name it. I gave it up, and then I moved back into my old room and got out of that room. Okay. Because I knew what was in there, and I had Jim and Sue Stowe. Got their names right. I had them come back and they did the exorcism of the portal, getting that out of the house. And then they taught me. They taught me, which I'm, I don't know where I would be without them. And Sue was gone. She passed away last year. But those are two oh, most wow. amazing people I've ever met okay. in my life. I love them so much. Uh, anyways, I'll probably send this to him. He's such a, a good man of God. But they taught me how to anoint my door frame. Mm -hmm. They taught me how to anoint my walls and they taught me to also like how to not be afraid because then I grew afraid of the demons instead of being friends with them. Mm -hmm. And I used to do the knocking thing, but this time it was to say, they would say, Felicia, if they knock, you knock back and say, you can't do anything that I can't do. And I'm Ooh, like, you're right. That's so good. When they would move the beads to Jim my curtain. Jim and Sue, they had it going on, man. 
I know if they move the beads, the curtain, I want you to get up from where you are. Do not stay there in the fear. Get up and go move them and say, you cannot do anything that I cannot do. Mm. And they would, so would, good. When I would close, when they would close the doors, they would slam doors, the same thing until the fear was gone. And when all the fear was gone, then they left completely because they, they didn't have a place anymore. They didn't have a hold. Right. So they walked me through that and started counseling me and getting, they're the ones that also got my multiple personalities to come back and get me back to a whole unified being. yes okay yes um and then later it took years unfortunately so it's deliverance and discipleship yes. and spiritual warfare and yes. they, just, yes. they just gave you the whole package well, they huh? have it All they right. have come it on they, yes. that's awesome that's so awesome god um yeah that was that's a major piece of my piece of my testimony it took years though to get delivered from the demons unfortunately okay. do you know how, how old were you then when I got delivered from the demons? Second Trace Diaz. No. Uh, Jim like, and Sue's worked with you. They got you all. They got the the front end alignment going did. on. And yeah, but you're was, back in a line. There was one that I, I don't know why had such a, such a hold, such a high place. Like, okay. And got shoved really down deep and would only surface when I was alone. Okay. And would torment me and torment okay. me and torment me for years yeah. when I was alone. And getting delivered from that looked like this. If I have a second, do I have a second? Yeah, go ahead. I was, at a, I was at a Trace Diaz again, which Trace Diaz is not for deliverances. Real quick, if y'all are here again, I think it's raining. So. Uh, oh, it's beautiful. I love the rain. <laughs> Praise God for rain. Let it, it rain. Yeah, amen. <laughs> Let it rain. Love that song. It's pure and whole. Um, anyways, so I was at this Trace Diaz, and I was, there's this guy that used to be a Satan worshiper. And I'm not talking minor. I'm talking like he was in it, like okay. full head. And he had been turned around in his head and was always saying, I'm in love with a man. I love Jesus. And he just was so on fire for Jesus. But he knew that I had demons and we had discussed it before. Okay. And he's like, but you're not ready. And I'm like, well, that's frustrating. But I was at this night and we were having worship. And I remember feeling my entire body glued to the chair and I could not move. And I'm like, this is it. It's time to get rid of them. Mm. And I can't. I physically cannot okay. get up. And they had done this to me before in my dreams. And they also, they taught me, Jim and Sue taught me how to say in my dreams, Jesus, 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 until they let me go. Okay. they would put me in binds when I was right. sleeping. Okay. So they taught me a lot of things. But when I was in this, I'm like. Stuck in a chair. Stuck. And somebody else, I think it was my mother, took me and picked me up and walked me over to him, which took a lot of effort. I think it took two people to get me over to okay. him. Obviously, I threw up, got delivered. It all came out because it all has to come out in the name of Jesus when you're ready. And then the part that I love is that for the first time since choosing darkness, however long ago that was, for the first time I could accept a hug. And I had a friend oh, hug me wow. and I bawled. I, had, I couldn't come hug anybody on. without having major anxiety attacks. You oh couldn't get God. near me without full blown panic attacks. So I had a hug for the first time in I don't know how many years without wow. panicking. So I was absolutely delivered. There was Come no. On, that's so cool. And there was probably 20 people in the room bawling because they knew that mm -hmm. I couldn't have handle touch, that there was no way you could touch me. You couldn't get near me because I just couldn't handle it. So they knew the truth of. Oh, this this woman this just real. got really she delivered. Got delivered. Yeah, believe it or that not, that don't happen right, <laughs> right. there. Yeah. Wow. Yes, and I probably hugged her for like ten minutes straight. So awesome. it was a beautiful moment, and things have been different since. Then, okay, sure. tell us about Felicia now. What's what's going on with Felicia now? Where, uh, where are you at now? <laughs> well, life now. And, 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 so, how long ago was that? How long I have you been? Got really free? saved when I was like twenty-two, so I'm thirty-five. Okay, so, all right. However many, 13 years? Okay, 13, come really on, somebody. Uh, it's been obviously a journey to get rid of all the darkness, but I I don't know. I, I love everything about light now, and I love everything about color. And I own probably over 100 plants because I just, I love nature again. And it's my home place. It's my safe place. It's what makes my well, heart happy. Well, that's who happy. he created you to be he from did. the beginning. He did. And the enemy tried to strip that away, yeah. and now God's giving it all but back. He can't. Yeah. Oh, come on can't once the lord says that one's mine so you're back to the flower child nature I girl I come on am. somebody um, do you like animals oh all of them yes including all of them. bugs all the i love bugs bugs a lot yes tell me you don't like spiders i, I mean love spiders no way yes 
<laughs> worms, beetles, man. I'm gonna tell you what. Don't. I had so many caterpillars in my backyard. Oh yeah, they're out uh, right now. They're called tent caterpillars. Tent caterpillars. They'll start eating everything. Well, all I know is they set up shop. They set up their yeah. tent at my house. I'm sure they did. And <laughs> I got out with a spray hose, and I yeah. was. <laughs> I know. I hate it, but I, I understand. I, I hate it because if you too. don't, they're gonna eat everything man they you'd walk outside and they fall on your head and you're walking around with three caterpillars in your hair <laughs> you go, what is it oh! well when i have conversations with people if i'm on the phone with them we've got them right now too real bad i, I jumped in the, the truck and i had like three caterpillars get, like, on my pants i just get 10 of them if i'm having conversations with people and just walk around the yard <laughs> wow okay I, so nature you know, girls oh it ain't oh, just yeah. flowers man it's no. animals bugs all of it spiders you know, okay I love them all yeah. all right so, so where are you at today way. Um, uh, the Lord. What's the Lord doing me, in your life right now? It, well, right now is I'm in a major um, humbling season. I'm being extremely humbled, so I, I would not call this a. This is all pretty right now. Right now, it's actually okay. <laughs> That's all. It's right. really humbling. Well, you, you, we did we did Paxton's uh, podcast last night, and yeah, he was like on a ten year pause button. Yeah. And that was all to, you know, bring him yeah. to a place of humility. That's where I'm at. And and it's, yeah, stop trying to be self-dependent. And, yeah. Being very humble right now. Well, that's good. Ways, but that's good. The, the Lord's definitely, right now I'm, um, take it or leave it. This is the only words I got. Right now I am pretty much benched from ministry. That was my life for a long time. That's okay. all I ever wanted to do when I got saved. Okay. And then. Same with Braxton. A, Bit of a benched, benched season that it's okay. really doesn't doesn't mean no. It just not, it means not now, right? I, and that's perfectly okay because the refiner, the refiner's work and the process of the refiner is going to make it that much more powerful, that much more pure, that much more. Day. Yeah, absolutely. For now, it hurts. I believe that one hundred percent. For now, it hurts. <laughs> Amen. I so one thing about me is I love youth. Like I love youth. When I got saved, that was the first ministry I ever came part of, and I never stopped. Okay. And they are my favorite to be around in just everything about you. So I've done a lot of youth ministry, and the Lord's used me for that. And a lot of that comes from the the reality of your greatest, um, the place that the enemy had you the most is your greatest ministry team. Mm-hmm. So middle school is when everything went yeah. <laughs> for me. So middle school is actually my favorite group of kids now. Really? I'm, Middle okay. So much. I went sideways in middle so, school too, but I I, I, don't, oh, I don't feel the call to junior high. I love them, <laughs> <laughs> and I love high school too. I, and I love awesome. young adults, but uh, awesome. Elementary is still a stretch, but the Lord has. Well, I know I, I that, said so. this earlier, and I, I said we'd probably get back to the flags. Yeah. But you know, when you you started coming to Joy Church, I know you're still in the process of transition and stuff, yeah. but I can still remember. I believe it was right over there. The very first time you got flagged, and, I, and, and you just, you don't just jump into, whoosh, you just kind of like, it's almost like you're imagining what is about to go on. Yeah. And then you just cut loose. I wait. Whoosh, like flag ninja. <laughs> <laughs> and man, I'm going to tell you ninja what, ninja. there's an authority that comes yeah. off of you when you sling them flags. And after hearing your, I knew bits and pieces, yeah. but, but hearing your full blown story, now I know why when you worship with flags, it's like every demon in a 10 mile perimeter is like gone. And so, I yeah, do feel it too. <laughs> there's an authority that comes with you when you worship with flags, because it's almost like you're, 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 you're intimidating. It's not like you're almost, you are intimidating the enemy and like, you know what? Well, you need to get on. The Lord taught me to flag. Nobody else did. Really? I had never seen flags. I never heard of them. And I'd be at home. When did you break flags out in the church? Did they have flags at the church you were at? No. No. Oh. You broke them out? No. You couldn't even. Raise oh, you your flagged hand. at if home. You raised your hand. That was like whoa. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you stomped your foot. I stomped my foot a lot, and they'd be like, "Please just stop." I'm like, but "There's." <laughs> okay. So no. So you just. Uh, no, I was Where did you get the concept of flags? Yeah, okay. Where'd that come from? So, I was at home. Okay. And I would go into worship, what I call beautiful spirals now. And I didn't know it was happening, but I was going into a, a spiritual realm. 
and it was very easy like for me physically to dancing spinning yes. spirals okay but i was that's, dancing that's literally spirit. the word rejoice in hebrew means to spin around oh. hilariously well i would worship and dance in the spirit often at home it was my okay. favorite space to be and the lord okay. always led me there but i always felt for a long time this burn in my hands and i couldn't figure it out and i would always be like what in the world is this? I don't understand. And then I saw on a Bethel thing one time, somebody waving flags and went, that's it. I know it. And I found some, because I'm a crafter, right? So I found some dowel rods, which are heavy wood poles. I found a tablecloth that was my grandmother's. I cut the tablecloth and wrapped it and super glued it together, put it on these things. And I put them in my hands and went, oh my gosh, (laughs) this is... Finally, this is wow. what my hands have been uh, needing for all this time. I couldn't figure it out. On. So I started doing that at home and I had to let the Lord guide me of how to do it because it was a very short ceiling and there was a lot of uh, stuff. <laughs> and so I was like, Lord, you have to Why didn't you get out of nature, nature girl? Because I didn't have, well, there was no such thing for me as speakers yet. I'm going to so jump so high, I'm going to scrape the sun. <laughs> But there was no music outside. I didn't know how to do that yet. I was a baby. Awesome. There was only music okay. inside the house. So well, that, that, there you go. That's, so, uh, that was imparted to you by the Lord. It was. That's Christian, cool. you got, I, I, man, we always wrap these things up. You've got questions. What, yeah, I'm a, I'm you, a, I know your wheels have been spinning over there. I'm, I'm going to switch it up a bit this okay. time. Okay. So, uh oh. Let's do it. First thing, I just want to mention, I just kept thinking this over and over. Like, how much different. Would your story have been if in middle school, a someone like yes. a, a, a Christian, a, a believer, saw you alone? Oh, that's good. And just came to your side. Like it seems like such a little thing. Just like, oh hey, Felicia, good, sit down Christian. next to you. I want to be that. And it's like I've always e- wanted to be exactly. That. I remember sitting by a lake all the time. There was a lake behind our house, mm-hmm. and I would sit there alone by the lake and watch every person that walked by and beg and cry on the inside please stop to talk to me please stop to talk to me and nobody ever did and i couldn't talk to my parents at the moment because it just was a mess on the inside and we were around scared to share the gospel and there's multitudes of people just like that on a park begging for it begging for somebody to just stop just and they didn't need to say anything but i'm here you know we got this warped mentality of nobody's gonna want to hear they're all gonna reject me And there's little girls sitting all yes. over the place saying, "Somebody yes. stop!" Are you yes. kidding me? Not, That's a great question. Not, buddy. not even that. Is 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 this that like we think it's a, a failure if we hear from the Lord and then we don't see demons cast out or legs grow out? <gasps> right. Where it's like, if you if if the Lord told you to go to Felicia in middle school and just befriend her and chill with her, <laughs> you would think that's a failure. But that in yeah. reality, looking at what happened. Could have stopped that assignment from that Could have possibly changed the whole narrative. Wow. Because if I'd had that friend, mm -hmm. then maybe the one sent on assignment from the enemy never would have been able to get in. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Because I wouldn't have accepted her. Good Lord. Man, that's good. So, man. That's real good. But we like to, we like to just jump in the clicks with everybody else. That's why don't, don't minimize the the small things that the Lord tells you. Come on. Yeah. It's like something that seems as unimportant as sitting down with a, 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 a girl at... Random park. You know, a lonely person at a park or something. It's like that's awesome. Yeah. That's you got anything else? Um, yeah. So uh, that was just a little that was, bonus thing. That was like so a good. Side swipe, <laughs> that's man. a good bonus. Um, that was a bonus track. But yeah. Um, yeah. I just, I really <laughs> I just those. felt that instead of um, like my cu- my customary question that we've been doing, which I think is really yeah. fun, by the way. Yeah, I, like I do it. too. Yeah. I think it's great. Um, I don't know. I really, I really just want to build you up and kind of exhort you in this current season that you're in, yes. um, purposely in public with people watching. Yeah. Um, the Lord's doing a really special thing in you, uh, for all the way from birth. Right. The reason the enemy attacked you so hard is because he sees who you really are. Well. He see. He knows who you are, and the Lord does too. And that's why He rescued you. And so the Lord, I'm saying that to say that you have such an incredible purpose and incredible destiny. The Lord wouldn't sit you down unless it was for an incredible reason. For you to have that much potential and for him to still say, sit down, not yet. There is an incredible reason for that. Yeah. And I don't, I'm not going to pretend to know it. I'm not going to pretend no. to question what God's thinking. Is it 
off to he knows. Like but standing. everything God does is intentional. And there's a, a reason you came to Joy Church, and there's a reason that you're, you're sitting right now, learning, just growing. Because if you, if you go out and do stuff out of God's will, you're going to try and grow. Instead, you'll just fall over, and, and all somebody. that the Lord yeah. brought you out of will be for nothing. Yo, you might wreck your car like Paxton. <laughs> oh, no. I look forward to hearing that. <laughs> Wait till you get to Paxton's podcast. You go, I can probably but, identify with Paxton in that 10-year pause. Amen? Thank you. Amen. Yeah, so no matter how long, how much longer or how much shorter, this is where God has you, and it, it's not by an accident. Like, you're not missing anything by not doing ministry. There's not lives that are not being changed because of you. Uh. Because you're not the one doing the changing oh, God is. And so for you sitting down is actually changing more lives than you doing stuff. Mm. And so I'm going to need to record that in my heart. There you go. I, yeah, well, really we got it right there. there. Amen. Ooh, and know no. this. There's, you bring something to the table by just being in the room. Yeah. Literally. Hmm. When you walk in, when we're having gatherings, and you walk in, you bring something. And you don't bring it and sit on it. You actually release it. I don't. I, I don't know if you know that you release it more than what you think. Yeah. And there's there's there is there is es, there is <laughs> essence. <laughs> there's essence and there's spiritual content mm -hmm. to your life mm -hmm. just by walking in the room. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. All right. Amen. So, yeah. you got any more Christian? Are we good? I'm good. Man, this has been great. This has been great. Honey bee, be happy. Honey, <laughs> come on. This was so awesome. Hey, and everybody's going to be blown away by your story. Oh. You're going to, they're going to, you sit like right over here on Sunday morning. You're just going to be getting oh, mauled. No, oh, no. Your story. I'll Here's be your honest. Story. Before, uh, oh, no. <laughs> I don't know who it was that told me first, that maybe Pastor Rod or someone else, but uh, I had no idea you had such a, a crazy testimony. Like I hadn't, I had no idea. Like that, that's, I mean, that's, the a, that's the testimony. Is, that's the, she had a demonic that's, furniture yeah. moving company. <laughs> that's funny. That's, Satan that's and really sons funny. moving company. All right. Well, Hey, look, look, can, can I say one more thing? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, Come yeah. on. I, I want to give some credit to the people, some people, actually one person in particular. I would not be alive if it wasn't for my mother. Like, when she found out really what was going on, that woman was on her knees all the time on. for me. And so was my grandmother. And then I'm sure that my uncle was too. I'm actually 100% certain that he was. So what I'm bringing that up to say is, do not think that your prayers are void mm -hmm. for people that are prodigals. Yeah, There's no one that is beyond coming back home. There's no one that's beyond coming back home, no matter what people have said. Keep praying for it. Keep interceding for them. It matters. It's making a difference. You don't know what you're keeping them away from. I tried to do hard drugs, mm. and I would puke them out. I literally puked them out and knew, knew that it was God keeping them from staying in my system. Mm. And now I recognize that it's because people were praying for me. How much worse would it have been if there hadn't been people on their knees for me? So, yeah. You know, I say, was thinking, pray. you know, was it Jim and Sue? <clears throat> Yeah, they spent so much time interceding. It's yeah. almost like there was a relationship being built without yeah. it being mm. built. Mm. That's why there was a great That's connection. Real. There was mm -hmm. a, there was a yeah. connection, and That's there was real. a there was a vulnerability you had yeah. with them. It's because they were praying. Yeah. They were interceding. God, so that's real yeah. good. Yep. That's awesome. Amen. That's good. Amen. Amen. All right. Can we pray for you? Yeah. Christian, yeah. won't you pray for Felicia? Has anybody ever said no? Amen. <laughs> Right? If they did, we'd probably pray anyways. Yeah, yeah I'm we're going to pray so. anyway. <laughs> hey, bye, 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 bye. <laughs> All right, well, Lord, thank you for tonight. Thank you for Felicia and just the, the, the honor that we have here uh, at Joy Church, yeah. but but also just me and Pastor Rod to, to know her and to get to experience what you've done in her and are doing through her. Yeah. And Lord, I thank you for the plan that you have for her life. Lord, all the, the hills and the valleys and the mountains and and everything in between, God, I thank you that you've been there through the thick and through the thin and that you've never given up yet and you're not going to give up in the future. And so we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your mercy through her story, God. And I just, I, I pray, God, that, that you're, you, you would hold her in your hand, that she would stay in the palm of your hand for the rest of her life, God. In Jesus' name. 
Amen. 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 Christian, you were praying about the mountains and the hills, and I couldn't help but think, and the bugs and the flowers and the spiders. <laughs> Amen. All right. Joy Church Podcast. Felicia Baker, it's been a privilege and an honor to have you tonight. This has been awesome. Yeah. I can't wait to listen to Get Out. Amen. Yeah, it's going to be. Too, it's it's, it's going to go viral. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs>